Let's go. Let's get this clear, Doc. None of y'all can control me. New purpose. What's going on, guys? And welcome to episode three of Keenan's classes. And in today's video, we're going to be going through five tips to help elevate your elevate. I don't like that word. Does he fucking enhance your mindset? To help improve your sound design. We're going to be doing these effects in Premiere Pro, but you can use these in any kind of video editor that you like. But let's get stuck into point one. Okay, so tip one is to use the rate stretch tool to match, for example, woo sound effects to a transition. Here is the clip on its own. So you can see in the clip, the motion is kind of slow. And then when you match it up with the woo sound effect, have a listen, doesn't sound right. So I press R on my keyboard, which brings up the rate stretch tool. And then I just drag it out. And what this does, it stretches the sound out, makes it a bit lower in pitch. Have a listen. Maybe that's a bit too long, but after a little bit of tweaking, Tip number two is to use the low pass tool to make your sound effects sit below your music track. As you can hear in this sound effect, it's got a bit of a high end. And the high end of the track doesn't really make it sound very realistic. So what we do is add a low pass filter. Right here, I've got a 1000 Hertz low pass filter. And what this does is it cancels out all of the frequencies of the sound above 1000 Hertz. So have a listen. So now it sounds more like a subtle woo sound effect. And when you pair it with the track, it's very subtle, but it kind of makes it sound very realistic. If we didn't have the low pass filter, you can just tell the difference there. So for me, my favorite way to sound design is to make sure that it sounds very subtle. A lot of people just slap on a sound effect and don't do anything to it. And it kind of just makes it a bit unprofessional. But before we move on to the next tip, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. And that's right, I've got a sponsor now. I am a proper YouTuber. The sponsor of today's video is Nitrosme. They've created an insane pack of elements and transitions for Premiere Pro users to help spice up your videos. There's no installation process. You literally just open it up and drag on whatever effect you like, and you can preview it in the media browser. In this pack, you have a whole bunch of motion graphics, text presets, transitions, and even sound effects to help you create your videos. So being able to drag on an effect I want and getting it done in like under 10 seconds is pretty sick. And it also stops you guys from being bored watching my videos. So if you're interested in checking out the bundle, you can head to the link in my description and you can check out the pack on Envato. Tip number three is to use reverb to create a spacey and dreamy environment because sometimes sound effects when you record them, they might sound a bit too present and you want to make them sound a bit further away or create a better effect. So have a look at a section of the video campaign that I did for Nvidia. If you can hear this sound right here, let me solo it for you. That it's got a reverb on it. And what you can do is just type in reverb here and then you add studio reverb, you just drag it on. I've already done that. So if you come up here and I've added the effect Great Hall, you have all of these effects to choose from. I just chose Great Hall. So if you have a listen and if I turn off the reverb, this is what it sounds like. Very, very present, doesn't really have that much of an effect. So just adding some subtle reverb to some sound effects really makes a massive difference. I've also done it to the keyboard typing effect. So if you hear it right now, you can hear that just a little bit of a reverb, a little echo. And if you turn it off, again, very, very present, doesn't sound as dreamy. Tip number four, if you have moving objects within your frame, use the panning feature. So when people are wearing headphones, they can hear it moving from the left to right speaker. So here we have a shot of my friend Tom from the Ascend video that I did with Lumix. If you just have a listen. He's actually walking from left to right, but the sound is very kind of mono. So what we're gonna do is turn it into a stereo track by using the pan feature. In the effects control section, the panner is already at the bottom. And what you can do is create a keyframe right at the beginning. You can either press this button right here, or if the stopwatch is blue, then it'll automatically create a keyframe when you change a setting. So right now, if we bring it over to the left, that means the balance is all the way over to the left speaker. And as he moves over to the right hand side, we move it all the way over to the right. So if you now have a listen, if you're listening with headphones, you can really hear the effect that he's walking from left to right and it just makes the viewer feel like they're more immersed in your video. 
The last tip is to keyframe the volumes to create different effects. So for example, on my clip here, a shot of my friend Matt, we have a wind sound effect. Have a listen. It sounds very basic, but you can actually create a woosh sound effect. If you can't find one that matches what you want, you can just keyframe the volume. So for example, create a few keyframes and make it go a bit louder here. You've literally just created your own rouge effect. And the good thing about keyframing your sound effects is that if you're moving further away from an object or moving closer, when you keyframe it, it sounds a lot more realistic rather than just leaving the sound effect as is. It just sounds a bit boring. So for example, if I keyframe some volume changes now, it can make it sound like it's really windy. So from just a normal wind sound effect, which just sounds very linear, have a listen. I mean, obviously that doesn't sound completely realistic, but being able to keyframe the volume opens you up to so many different possibilities for how your sound sounds. So that is it for today's video. I hope it's taught you a couple of new tricks to sound design. In next week's video, um, the climbing gym's finally open in the UK. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a vlog, showing you guys a bit of an insight into my personal life and what I do aside from video editing. So if you're interested, catch me next Monday. But until then, on the track, boy. Quick little note just before we end the video, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has watched the previous video. It means a lot for you guys to say some really kind words about what I put out. My whole goal is to spread some valuable information and be pretty transparent because I don't think there's enough of that in the industry today. Massive thank you to everyone who has joined the LAM fam over the past few weeks. I can't wait to see where this whole channel goes in the future. Bye bye.